So hi, hello and welcome, Microbe Hunter here. <laughs> Look what happened, I accidentally broke uh, one of my microscope slides and when I, when I picked it up, I accidentally hurt myself a little bit, so I'm bleeding and that's actually a pretty good opportunity uh, to collect some blood for microscopy. So um, yeah, I'm just going to put my own blood again under the microscope. A very tiny drop of blood is all, all, that, all that you need. Uh, too much blood makes it difficult to observe because then the layer of blood is too thick. Quickly put a, a cover glass on top and look how the blood now spreads let me press down a little bit how the blood now spreads across um, the, the microscope slide. Let's quickly put it under the microscope before it starts to coagulate. Yeah, and, and this is what we see. Uh, I'm now using um, a 40 times uh, magnifying objective. And uh, because the, the layer between the cover glass and the microscope slide is so thin, this actually uh, yeah, presses the blood cells flat a little bit. And this kind of gives it this very nice arrangement. Uh, but what I would like to do is I would like to go up a little bit with the magnification. Yeah, and now this is uh, 60 times, uh, my 60 times objective. Well, people have asked me in the past already, well, well why, why does the blood not look red? Well, and the reason is, is because uh, the bl blood cells are so thin that uh, the red color is uh, barely visible. Um, and also, of course, I'm using a special contrasting technique where I'm able to change the colors around as well. Um, so uh, if you want to see the whole thing in bright field, in the natural colors, then this is how it looks like. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, red blood cells magnified uh, greatly are almost, almost colorless, maybe slightly pinkish um, at best. But what we have here now is a very nice example of what happens when the red blood cells are squashed flat between the cover glass and the microscope slide. Yeah. Um, but it also allows you to see a little bit how flexible the red blood cells are. Here, this is a place where the layer of blood is still a little bit thicker. Um, so you might actually now see that some of the red blood cells are able to overlap um, as well. Um, and uh, they're also able to move a little bit more freely here. And some of them are, are also able to stick together. This, of course, is an air bubble. And here the layer of blood is uh, fairly thick, uh, so it's very difficult to see the individual cells. Well, and this here is now in phase contrast uh, microscopy. Uh, phase contrast is a very, very good technique uh, to observe specimens that are otherwise very difficult to see because the contrast is too low. And this probably already answers the question of why red blood cells do not look red under the microscope. The answer is, is that uh, also the microscope itself is able to change um, around the contrast and the colors. And uh, therefore, um, we're kind of trading off a little bit the natural colors um, for that, for the fact that we're able to see more details. So sometimes it's more important to see details even if the colors are not correct. Yeah? And this is a specific case that we have um, over here. And that is all that I wanted to show you today again in these uh, short videos. And uh, I wish you all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always. See you around next time. Bye-bye.